Hey guys, how you doing? Sonny Do Carpenter. I'm out here at the grandparents' place. I'm just getting ready to build a bunch more forms for wall panels. This was the original first test panel we did. It turned out great. Um, I'm also going to take you through a little bit of the planning process that I went through in developing how to lay out all the wall panels for the walls on the shed and a little bit about the details I am planning on using um, to fasten the wall panels to the concrete slab. Now, that being said, if you guys see these details and see these plans, there's stuff I just came up with out of my head. If you think you have a better way of doing it or something, leave a comment. I would be happy to hear it. I love your guys' ideas. But anyway, that being said, let's get started here. Okay, that is what I need right there. Yeah, I need a Bosch hammer drill. <clears throat> Oh, DeWalt has one too. I better read some reviews. But right now I'm after a window. On my computer here and I have grandma and grandpa's shed that I'm building out of air crete and I have my basic sketch and plan up and as I go through this um, the reason I'm doing this and I'm doing the front wall first is because it has the window and the door and it's the hardest Essentially, um, I am doing 16 inch panels as the wall system. And I know this is a 16 inch right here. Let me get just a pointer up. So I know that this panel right here is 16, this one's 16. But because we want 42 inches uh, from the side of the edge of the um, shed before the <sighs> wow we actually because there's three and a half inches over there want an additional four inches so I am gonna have to pull this door over four inches I'm gonna do that real quick okay and I'm gonna have to push it the other way four inches as well this may end up working better so, and there we go, we have a nor our normal door size, but now, this, uh, what I did was I took and I put panels, full panels, where I thought they could be, here, here, and here, and these aren't going to be full panels because there's a window, but I have to go ahead and just kind of make a grid of where my panels are going to be and how big they're going to be 
so that I can go out and construct all the panels so that this just goes together like an erector set. Okay guys, I am back. Um, like I said earlier, I wanted to do the front side because it was it was just the most difficult. I mean, we've got the shed here, the east wall right here. All these are the same, all these panels. The same with the west wall and the back wall the panels are all the same and so those are just going to be easy I'll put them in my jig and knock those out um, I'm still going to use my jig for most of these panels we got one two three four five six panels on the front that are going to be uh, 16 inch wide and I put a header over the window and the door and they're both going to be 16 inches as well but on the side of the door to outline it here you can see they're going to be 10 inch panels so I had to uh, just kind of finagle around and do something that was going to look symmetrical and look nice and this is what I have come up with now I, I, I had to run and get that window so that I knew the exact dimension so I know exactly how tall to make these panels and how wide to make the headers and everything else and so, um, one of the uh, first questions that Grandpa asked me was, how are you going to fasten, and this is a detail we'll go over today, how are you going to fasten the panels at the bottom uh, to the concrete? And um, obviously I'm using wall panels that are framed up with a sheet metal stud and so that really makes it quite easy so I'll just pull up that file real quick um, and there it is base detail shed Okay, and this is my base detail for the shed. Basically, I have a piece of uh, angle iron. It's just one and a quarter inch, uh, you know, eighth inch angle iron. I'll drill some holes in it, and I will just take a Hilti drill and drill down into the concrete and bolt that directly to the concrete on that side, three and a half inches in from the outside edge of the um, shed. This is a cutaway view just you know of a panel and how I'm gonna fasten it to it and then I'll run a piece of uh, uh, three inch flat steel or sheet metal on the outside and I'll do the same here I'll drill into it and um, then I will just take my fasteners and uh, you know self tapping of uh, fasteners and fasten into the wall panel and that is how the wall panel is going to be fastened to the base so um, let me pull the other file back up and we'll go over it a little bit more and then I gotta get out there and start making these panels um, Let me see. There we go. And we're back uh, at the shed again. Um, I actually didn't account for the thickness of this wall over here. I needed 42 inches from the edge of the door over. So I did, uh, like I think I, you saw it earlier, I had to pull this door over. Um, also, uh, I divided the roof top up by 16 inches. I'm going to do 16 inch panels going this way on the roof. And uh, to make it all work out, I had to push the roof eaves in about 3 inches on each side. There will still be plenty of... of uh, let me see. I'll better pull that down so you can see. There will still be plenty of roof eave on it, though. 
And so I think the first wall I want to get knocked out is the hard one. I want to do all these uh, funny shape or funny length and width, these two funny width panels, and I'll get them all poured. And then what I'll do is I'll just pour a bunch of these normal panels as well, uh, a few of them, so that I can just prop up and set up one side of the shed. So about half of the west wall from the center over, so I'll do like four panels for it, and then half of the uh, east wall, I'll do four panels for it. And then what that'll allow me to do is uh, prop these front panels up and get them all fastened together and there will be something uh, holding them in place so the wall wouldn't just fall over obviously. Um, I am going to have um, some braces uh, that are going to temporarily hold the wall panels up as I fasten them together and get the wall up. There will be just some pole braces that will go down to some anchors in the center of the slab uh, just temporarily and just to make it a little less temporary so that I can continue using the slab as my workspace I'll just do half of these panels what it what is half half of them is about four of them yeah so there's nine panels total on the east wall nine panels on the west wall and guys let me know in the comments if you like uh, me explaining my drawings and uh, my details as we go. Once I get the walls up, I'll get I'll draw up uh, attachment details of how I'm going to attach the gable ends, how I'm going to attach the roof eaves and uh, to the top of the building, and so on and so forth. But once I get the outer shell, just these four walls up without the roof on it, I am going to take a, a piece of scaffolding in um, so that I can have something to walk on and work up higher here uh, um, but outside of that uh, I'm just going to use temporary braces to hold the panels up while I put these pa front panels together and we'll go from there but right now I gotta get out and get these panels all built so that we can pour them so I will talk to you guys later and let me know in the comments if you like my drawings and uh, if you like the details and want to see the de details as we go um, versus me just drawing the whole thing up at the end and posting it. So I will talk to you later. Thanks. This is the package I already broke open. The others, well, they're all bundled together. Yeah, you wanna help me get it, Tim? You gonna help me? Yeah. Alright. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten. That's ten. how it's spelled! Oh man, can you get that in? Oh. oh. Thanks, buddy. It's such a good help.
get in that. I just wanted to make a recording of taking the plastic off of it. When Melanie and I first did this, uh, Mrs. Honeydew came up with the idea of just wrapping the plastic around. So if there was any little, so nothing would leak out. And it was an awesome idea. And this has the chicken feet in it. We haven't done anything with it. It's good and set up so you can walk on it. But I just want to see what the other side looks like. When we're doing the rest of them, babe, we need to tamp the bottom and tamp the uh, um, the wire fabric that's in it. Cause you come and look at, get a close up right here. Like at every cross of the wires, there's a little hole and there's a few over here. You can see them kind of all the way down, but then there's other areas where it got in really good. All we need to do is just tamp it. Hey guys, if you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe. Be sure and click the bell at the bottom to get notifications and uh, stay tuned. We're going to be pouring these things tomorrow and pretty much every day after that's going to be a pour day until we get this thing done. So uh, we're moving on. Awesome. You're such good help, babe.